Rachel filling in for the ever busy Johnny Ritchie. And tonight we are here at the 2013 National Golden Gloves Tournament of Champions. Here tonight you're going to see the nation's best amateur boxers duking it out for the title prize of the National Golden Gloves Champion. Now this is where boxers like Oscar De La Hoya, Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather all got their starts. So you never know, we could be looking at a future legend. The whole time I was fighting, that was going through my head. My mom and my dad, and I was just, just working. I couldn't stop going. I had to keep coming forward, because he had beat me before when he was younger. So he brought that into the fight, thinking that he was going to beat me again. A lot of trash talking, but I shut him up this time. Get that revenge. He then went in the glove. The Golden Glove, they wanted to see you rumble. That's what I did. Hopefully, I do make it to an Olympic team and go to the Olympics. But I'm going to keep pursuing my dreams and keep getting motivated by my trainer and my family and my friends. You know, winning this tournament was the beginning of a lot of great things for me in my career, so I, I always got a lot of respect for the Golden Gloves because it opened up a lot of doors for me. Winning the National Golden Gloves, that was my first open division win. I was only 18 years old. I was a senior in high school, and all the guys I fought were, you know, 25, 26. I was barely 18, so I was very proud of that. But I'm grateful to be here. Thanks so much for having me. And, uh, you know, big shout out to you guys for, uh, you know, giving these guys some exposure. It felt good, you know, a lot of people don't know that I actually competed in this tournament three times prior to this one, you know, and I lost in all three, so I had to go back to the drawing board, come back a little stronger, a little more disciplined, you know, and this is what it got me. He's just raw talent, raw talent, then he has the benefits of actually watching everyone, watching me, watching Allen, as well as Antonio, as well as Antonio, you know, so he's the combination of all of us put in one. I have my coach who's also my dad in my corner and I know he has my best interest at hand. So whatever he says from there, that's what we're gonna go with. Win, win, just win. I win in the best fashion I could. I always like to look good. I always like to win good. Everything, every time he threw one, I threw five. It gave me a lot of confidence. I felt like I, I had to come out here and make a statement for myself. I know people knew about it and they wanted to see what I could do. I basically just showed them. If I could go to the Olympics, I'll go to the Olympics. But if I could get a good offer to go pro, I'll go pro. Uh, my name is Cam F. Awesome. Uh, this, since, since the name change, uh, and I became Cam F. Awesome on February 16, 2013, this is my first Golden Glove National Championship. I'm a 10-time national champion. This is my third time winning the Golden Glove Nationals. Uh, my second time winning the Golden Glove Nationals here in Salt Lake City. I've won Nash the U.S. Men's Nationals three times. I've won the Olympic Trials, and I've also won National Pal three times. So I feel like a celebrity, even though I'm not. Yeah. They are doing, making some changes in the, in the Golden Gloves that really is going to propel it.
There's been a lot of people involved in putting this together. A lot of them are foamers. Boxing in Utah and the Fulmer brothers is just synonymous. So uh, Uncle Gene won the world championship in 1957. This was a, a big major project though. We started on this two years ago. The sport is cyclical. Like every other thing in the world, it's cyclical. And in my opinion, it's, it's coming out of a, a, a small bit of a, a recession. And I think the sky's the limit for the future of boxing right now. Before 2009, the last time Salt Lake had hosted the National Golden Gloves Tournament was 1968. The Rockwell uh, Times, you guys, were just one of our major sponsors. You know what, let me just stop there for a second because you guys uh, did so much and it's so good for these kids. I tell you the backgrounds they come from, but to have them sit at a radio station, you guys ask them questions and they go to their friends and have their friends listening. And, that's big time for these guys. That does so much for them, and I thank you. Every week for a month, you've had us on, and uh, that's been awesome. So, uh, anyway, a lot of great, a lot of great sponsors like that, and we appreciate it. One of the coaches from Philadelphia uh, has talked to me several times. His gym is right in the ghetto in Philadelphia, and he never knows. One day, a kid might not show up at the gym. Kid had a drive-by shooting and got killed. He's had that happen six times in the last 10 years. You're just glad that they're doing this, that this could maybe help change their lives so that they're not out on the street doing those kind of things. And that's the whole purpose of it. They all want to help their mothers. They all want to help to, uh, to, to their financial situation. You go to all these kids and they all have a story. Well, my name is Earl Newman, Jr. I'm um, 21 years old and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I used to be overweight. And um, I used to weigh 250 when I was about 14. So I took a few classes and then, like, you know, when I started boxing, I actually started sharing the weight and I realized that I actually had a, a, a real knack for the sport. I, I worked hard all year, you know. I went, I did my state to go to gloves and come out here and, you know, beat the top dudes in the country and stuff. And, like, you know, so do in front of my, my family and friends and stuff like that is just amazing. I'm, I'm happy to make them proud. The Olympics would be nice, but, you know, I always had aspirations to become my own world champion. A whole week of fighting is pretty difficult. This is where I'm at now, a national champion. 